In this video we're going to go through an example of making a confidence interval for a sample proportion. Now in my classes when I talk about sampling distributions I have three rules and rule one and three are for sample means and rule two is for sample proportions. How can you tell when you're allowed to use the normal distribution? It's actually quite simple. Uh, rule two, sample proportions will be normally distributed. So that means we're going to use a z-score from a normal table to make a confidence interval. And the standard error of the proportion is going to be the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. So p times 1 minus p over n, take the square root of the whole thing. When both of these two things are true, so both, not either, both of these, our sample size times the proportion and P here literally means the population proportion. But if you don't know the population proportion, then use your sample proportion instead, right? If you don't know, if you have no information about the population proportion, use the sample proportion instead when you need to. So N times P or N times P bar or sample proportion has to be bigger than five, bigger than or, well, greater than or equal to five. The bigger, the better. Uh, also, the sample size times 1 minus p has to be at least 5. Same thing, p bar if you don't know p. Now what we're doing here is we're checking to see if our sample size is big enough. Because when you, when you take larger and larger samples and you calculate the average, which is kind of what we're doing here, uh, except we're calculating a sample proportion, uh, the bigger your sample size is, the central limit theorem is what allows us to do what we're doing here. Central limit theorem says that with larger samples, aver sample averages, sample proportions, will have a normal distribution. Okay, the bigger the better. But this is a minimum that seems to work. Your answers will be relatively close as long as n times p is at least 5 and n times 1 minus p is at least 5. Um, your answers will be a little off though, and so the, the bigger this n times p number is, and n times 1 minus p, the bigger those both are, the closer your confidence intervals will be to being exact. Um, the normal distribution will become more of an exact uh, thing to use to calculate your confidence intervals, okay? And so as long as these are true, we always use the normal distribution. People always do. Uh, now, there are some, some fancier modifications that people do uh, to make these things more exact, but it's close enough. It, you know, there's, there are always more details, but in an introductory class, um, as long as these are true, use the normal distribution and it's fine. Now if they aren't true, if your sample size is too small, then you have two options. Get a bigger sample size, consult an expert, or you can use the binomial distribution to make confidence intervals. We won't talk about doing that right now, so let's just assume this is true, otherwise we're going to consult an expert and we're going to stop, okay? So. Here is a, a standard example kind of problem. During a campaign, we want to estimate the percentage of voters in the population that support our candidate. We call 655 likely voters, and we find that 500 of them want to vote for our candidate. Make a 95% confidence interval. Okay, what do we do? Well, we need to write the formula for a confidence interval, and it's very similar, really no different from making a confidence interval for a uh, population mean. We write it this way. It's our sample estimate, x bar or p bar in this case, plus or minus a z-score times a standard error. In this case, it's not a, a, a standard error for a sample mean, as I was getting ready to write there, it's a standard error for a proportion. And you just fill in the blanks. So, if we called 655 people and 500 of them want to vote for our candidate, what is the proportion of people in our sample who said yes, we want to vote for your candidate? Well, it's 500 divided by 655. Looks like it's going pretty well for our candidate. So, P bar Sometimes they'll give this to you in a problem, and sometimes they'll expect you to know how to calculate it, but it's just 500 over 
seven six three we'll call it seventy six point three percent of the people said yeah we'll vote for your guy now we want to make get an idea of how close we think this estimate is to the truth because this is just a point estimate it's a sample statistic and we want to see how close that might be to the population parameter where might the true proportion of everybody be uh, how, how do they feel about our candidate did they want to vote for him or not so we have 0.763 here uh, plus or minus okay now we need a z-score and to find a z-score for a confidence interval you just say well if we want 95 percent confident that 0.95 is our confidence coefficient it goes in the middle alpha is 1 minus the confidence coefficient so that's 0.05 that's the amount that goes out in the tails here and alpha over 2 is what you look up on the z-table you want 0.025 in one tail and that tells us that our z-score is going to be 1.96 okay and then we need to know the standard error what's the standard error well our standard error formula as it says here in rule 2 is the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. Now technically speaking we want the population proportion there but we don't know the population proportion so what we're going to use is the best thing we've got the sample proportion. So our and, and again you could most people usually write it this way for proportions whether or not you know the population proportion they use the Greek although if this was a sample means problem usually we'd say s and technically this is an s this is an we're kinda using a sample estimate to calculate this standard deviation here okay so different people use different notations it's not really important as much to me the notation as we we know what we're doing so we take our p bar 0.763 times 1 minus p bar 1 minus 0.763 divided by n 655 likely voters so one one thing I see people uh, getting confused on sometimes is what's our sample size is it the 500 that said yes or is it 655 well it's the total number of people we asked the question to that's our sample size okay so let's calculate this standard error and see what we get 0.763 times 1 minus 0.763 divided by 655 equals and then take the square root the last thing you do and so our standard error of our proportion is 0 0.0166 so we plug that into our formula 0 0.0166 now we multiply that times our z-score of 1.96 and we get that our margin of error so we could write it this way our margin of error is just the plus or minus number over here 0.00325 oh not two zeros one zero point oh three two five so we are 95 percent sure that the true proportion of people when they go to vote how many will vote for our candidate somewhere in this range 76.3 plus or minus 3.25 percent and again sometimes people leave the answer that way or they'll say um, we did a poll today of 655 voters likely voters and we found that 76 point uh, three percent of people are going to vote for our candidate with a margin of error of 3.25 percent sometimes people will will represent it that way or sometimes we'll just go ahead and add and subtract that number that 0 0.0325 from the 0.763 so 0.763 minus 0 0.0325 we could represent it as a range 0.7305 to and then what if we add that standard sorry that margin of error we get 0.7955 
We're 95% sure that the truth is somewhere in that range. And there's a 5% chance, that's the alpha, that it's not. So this is Berkey Academy signing off. That's how you, how you work a uh, sample proportions problem. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below.